This past week, I drove out to Batesville, a small town in Independence County, Arkansas, in order to attend the 2019 Ozark Foothills Film Fest. This event has been going on for 18 years. It's one of the many small-scale festivals that take place every year in the United States. In fact, Ozark Foothills Film Fest considers itself the smallest film festival in the country. For the uninitiated, film festivals are organized events where filmmakers submit movies of all shapes and sizes to be screened for the public and often play in consideration for a number of awards. For many, this is the first time their movie will play in a theater, and festival venues can often be used as a springboard for directors and the like to make their leap into the entertainment industry. The dream is, of course, for a studio executive to see your film and cut you a check for distribution rights, but due to a number of factors that would take far too long to explain in one video, this is happening less and less. The most prestigious film festivals in the world are known as the Big Three, Cannes, Berlin, and Venice. The last of which is the oldest festival in the world. You might have heard of the Toronto International Film Festival, or TIFF. It's North America's most popular festival in terms of attendance. And make no mistake, festivals, they can be huge events. TIFF attracts close to half a million people every year, and many of the world's biggest festivals often play host to celebrities, famous directors, and corporate bigwigs. For an indie filmmaker to have a spot in such a place is considered one of the highest honors. But getting into these big events can be practically impossible. Sunday Dance, for instance, last year received 13,468 film submissions, but they selected only 120. That means there was less than a 1% chance of being chosen. This is due in part to the fact that filmmaking is becoming more and more accessible as an art form, and this means that big name festivals are now getting flooded with submissions, and that means the competition to get into the venue is becoming tougher and tougher each and every year. But lost in this flood are the hundreds and even thousands of small sites festivals. Festivals that are held not in big cities with big celebrities and big distribution deals on the line, but in small corners of the world, in front of small audiences who are there simply for the love of the art. It's these festivals that, ironically, I think I love the most. Small town festivals often struggle to get worthwhile film submissions, because most of the time filmmakers tend to focus on sending their work to the places where they stand to make money, and even if they do decide to offer their flick to these modest venues, getting the filmmakers to actually show up to the event can be difficult. It's easy to see why, if they don't stand to cut a deal at a place like this, and the audience size is guaranteed to be small, why shell out money to attend? After all, marketing and advertising your film at a live event is a big cost in and of itself, not to mention travel and lodging considerations. It's a near guarantee that at small festivals, the filmmaker is going to lose money and seemingly gain almost nothing in return value. And yet, for whatever reason, I can't help but go to these things. Let me briefly explain why. Number one, at a small size film festival, I'm almost guaranteed to have better quality conversations. No offense to the big guns, but getting your film into a prestigious venue with lots of potential eyeballs means you're going to be marketing your movie pretty much the entire time you're there. Everything becomes about getting your movie out there. At Sundance, you're competing against 119 other movies, many of which screen at the exact same time as yours, but in different parts of the event. You suddenly feel incentivized to talk with as many people as possible and to spend all of that time talking, promoting your screening to them. Even after the screening concludes, you're going to want to talk to audience members and soak up as much feedback as possible about what worked and what didn't in your film, and you'll be juggling that with trying to hunt down and then woo investors and distributors. All of this culminates in a series of short, vapid conversations where you don't remember anybody's name, and you feel an urge not to spend too long chatting with anybody, lest you inadvertently miss your opportunity to strike gold with a certain studio rep. I've been at big venues as a spectator, and I've tried to talk with filmmakers. It's never a fulfilling experience. I try to have an honest conversation with a participant, and it always seems to consist of the same thing. They tell me their name, their movie's title, they give me a 15-second elevator pitch, and then if I try to extend things any further, I'll notice their eyes start to drift away while I'm talking. They've determined I can't get them distribution or an investment, and they're done with 
with a chat and ready to move on to the next person. I get it, I really do, but it always leaves a sour taste in your mouth, you know? By contrast, at a small town festival like Ozark Foothills Film Fest, I know going into it, I'm not finding money. I know a Netflix deal is not going to materialize there. And I know I'm not going to be overrun with people that I feel pressed to talk to. And so, I'm able to slow down. I can meet people, chat with locals, and there's no pressure to do more with my time than just visit. Through small festivals like this, I've met tons of folks, some not even filmmakers, just people who came in off the street and I've shared stories and gotten to know people I probably otherwise would have never met. This kind of connection, it's hard to come by in bigger venues. It's lost in the noise. But in the end, I always find these connections to be far more meaningful. Secondly, small town festivals almost always mean I get to meet young and aspiring filmmakers. Most of the time, the competition and selection at these places consists of student thesis films, often from a local community college. And I love these. They are a total crapshoot. One screening, you'll sit through one of the worst films you've seen, and the next, you'll stumble upon a total diamond in the rough. And the best part is, the only other people in the audience are usually the folks who made it. So whether the film is good or bad, I can almost always walk right over to the creator after the theater lights come back on and learn all about their journey of putting it together. I should probably mention at some point that I was at Ozark Foothills because an episode of Really Weird History was screening, in what technically counts as the first theatrical release of one of my YouTube videos. After the film screened, I was allowed to spend a while taking some questions from the audience, and these ranged from students inquiring about some of the animation's technical aspects to a few folks wondering about my personal feelings toward the subject matter the movie covered. Being able to talk at length about a video that I've grown very fond of was a greatly rewarding experience, and as the evening drew to a close, I left the venue to hit up the town. Which leads me to the final reason I still attend small film festivals. I love small towns. There's always been this big push for YouTubers to pull up their tent pegs and move to a creative metropolis like LA or New York, but for the life of me, I just don't see the upside. At least not for me. The stories I want to tell aren't in places like that. They're in places like like here, in places where I can find community and friendly folks. Which isn't to say that that can't be found in a big city, it's just, well, none of my YouTuber friends know the names of their neighbors. And it's also business oriented. Small towns are a more intimate affair, and it feels far more permanent in a good way. When I travel to a small town festival, I know I'm going to be exposed to local tradition, local folks, local food, and local hospitality. You just can't beat it. I know that small festivals like this are dying, but I hope that they don't go in my lifetime. Who knows, maybe there'll be a revitalization of the concept soon. I hope so, but time will tell. Chances are there's a local film festival somewhere near you. Why not give it a shot? You never know the creative talent that might just be living a few roads down from your house. I certainly enjoyed watching the documentaries of this festival, and I know that there are festivals all across the face of this country where great nonfiction titles are going largely unseen. So why not stop by? Maybe you want to see cinema-worthy documentaries, but you can't wait for a festival around you to take place. This video's sponsor, Curiosity Stream, provides a subscription streaming service of over 2,000 nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals like Prescription Nutrition, a documentary that folks from small towns could really appreciate. If you want to watch awesome long-form content that covers science, technology, and more, you can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month, but I'm going to hook you up with 30 days for free. Sign up at curiositystream.com slash Austin McConnell and use the promo code Austin McConnell during the sign-up process. Doing so helps me out as a creator, and in return you'll get an awesome collection of documentaries to check out.